Hello everyone and welcome to this video, Sun Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield. This is going to be a, another video on the European Union. So um, tell you what we'll do. Um, I'll do like I did in the last video like this. I will actually um, you know, talk a wee bit about my thoughts and feelings of um, everything that's transpired while um, I actually um, haul a truckload of stuff across Europe. So let's go. Now, before, um, before I actually start in earnest, I would like to apologise to anyone who felt seasick or car sick or travel sick of any kind uh, while watching the last one of these videos. Um, I do need at some point to buy um, another Xbox controller um, because mine, well, it's, it's, it just doesn't actually work properly. So, what do I think of Europe? Well, at the time of recording, it is the uh, 24th of June, um, 2016. So today is um, the day after the European referendum. So the UK has voted um, by quite a tight margin, I believe, to leave um, the EU. And, you know, a lot of people are reveling in this. However, there's a lot of people equally who are um, completely scared of what's away to happen. Now, um, as I said in my last video, I was actually planning to vote to remain in the EU, and indeed that's what I did when I went to the polling place. However, I did share with you my uh, scepticism of, um, you know, being able to vote. You know, I did share my scepticism of um, you know, any side of the um, EU debate. Now, um, obviously, you know, I chat to, you know, people on TeamSpeak, Skype, whatever, Facebook, Twitteru, I, d I don't know. Um, and, um, of course, I've been chatting to Elmo3. Now, uh, his, you know, he, he obviously, you know, is coming from a business-centric point of view because, I mean, that's what he studied. Um, and, you know, he's actually said that, um, you know, with um, the European Union, the UK, uh, being the, th the fifth largest economy um, in the world, Brexit would totally upset any everything, you know? And especially as, you know, we're just kind of coming out of a recession. You know, I mean, I, you know, I've not seen any improvement since the recession days, um, you know, here at ground level shall we say, within the UK. And it certainly does seem that the European Union in general has really quite struggled. One thing that I did um, th note is, um, you know, when it was, a, you know, when it was confirmed that the UK had actually voted to leave, um, the pound went right down. I mean, normally, you know, Normally the pound's about like you know one sixty or something uh, to the dollar. Now it's one pound thirty three. You know um, the FTSE dropped eight point eight uh, percent today. It just so it's oh, it's really not done anything. You know for uh, the economy so far. And um, you know a bit like my luggage here. You know it's all a bit damaged. Now. Obviously, you know, I'm looking at um, I'm looking at the EU, you know, and this whole situation from um, you know a disability point of view. And yes, I know it sounds like I'm babbling. Okay, um, I'm looking at everything from a disability point of view. You know, as in someone in the UK living with multiple disabilities. What's that going to mean for people like me? Well, let's have a think about it. The Disability Discrimination Act came into force in 1995 under John Major's Conservative government. Now, on paper you might think, oh, well done John Major, well done Mr Major. 
Good job, well done, you know. If only a wee bit progressive, you know. Giving, getting people the support they need and, you know, not discriminatory. Except it wasn't John Major's Conservative Party that wanted this legislation. It was actually the European Union. The same goes for, you know, workers' rights and things like that. I mean, the UK already has one of the longest working weeks in, uh, you know, in, in Europe, if not the longest. I reckon we're going to lose a lot of rights. And, um, you know, I... And there is evidence to support this, because certainly with the Human Rights Act, um, you know, the Tories have said that they want to scrap it and replace it with a British Bill of Rights. And it certainly seems that the UK is going in the direction of, um, you know, everything that America does what is bad, the UK seem to like the idea. Anyway, so, back to Brexit then. Neither side really wowed me. In fact, both sides actually repulsed me. Um, you know, it's... Um, each side, certainly down south, each side put on a fear campaign, you know, what would happen if we le uh, left, what would happen if we remained, you know, all kinds of horror stories. And it just was not pretty. There was not actual, there was no actual facts or evidence for any kind of predictions imparted to the public to let them make an informed decision. No, I, I just think you know, I basically just think people have been left to, you know, make their minds up on their own opinions because you couldn't find a straight cut answer anyway, anywhere, on any side of the debate. I mean, I, I understand. I understand. You, you can't say for sure what's going to happen in one, you know, in, in one instance or another. But, you know, you've held this referendum, you know, a lot of things are at stake here. Surely some research must have been done, you know, to actually see whether this was a good idea. I mean, do we even have any plans now that Brexit has happened? You know, does the country have any kind of plans at all? How's, how's the UK going to, you know, is, is um, the UK actually uh, working out any, um, you know, trade deals? Because, I mean, you're, you're going to need those. <laughs> And, well, let's let's talk a bit, shall we, about the um, some of the stuff the Leave campaign said. You know, they were coming out with, um, you know, I had a, you know, my friend Keza got this in the mail. You know, oh, the Leave campaign. It's, um, you know, if we exit Europe, we're going to be able to fund so many hospitals and this, that and the next thing. Yeah. Right. Now, unfortunately, people will have bought into those kind of um, quote-unquote promises. And the reason I say quote-unquote is because, well, this morning on Breakfast TV, Nigel Farage, who was a big player in the Leave campaign, would you believe it? In fact, it was because of his party that um, the Tories realised last year that they could be potentially in trouble you know people were defecting well, certainly in England people were defecting to UKIP and the Tories well they didn't like this so they actually felt that they had to um, they, they felt that it would be a good idea to actually hold an EU referendum you know and that actually won people back to the Tory party yes I'm apparently dozing and um, I'm going to get fined heavily by the uh, polis for, uh, you know, not stopping to take a rest. Um, you know, so the whole mandate for the EU referendum, in my eyes, was faulty. You know, because the UK, uh, UKIP didn't really base it on anything other than old-fashioned ideals. You know, this this notion of, oh, Great Britain, it's 1945 and 1966. Oh, yes. 
Let's go and make Land Rovers and, and Spitfire planes and then we'll fly the Spitfire planes and drive the Land Rovers. Oh yes, that's right. So, stiff upper lip, British and all that. Oh yes, what, 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 what? Ah, give a break. Um, <clears throat> but, um, I don't know. Yeah, I just don't feel that the mandate for the EU referendum was a good one. I mean, I, by all means, I, you know, being a big supporter of Scottish independence, I completely understand the desire for sovereignty. You know, I do. Yeah, because I, you know, I'm hoping that one day Scotland will become an independent country. You know, so, uh, yeah, I do see that. But to be honest, a lot of the Leave campaign has been sold to us on the immigrants' rhetoric. Oh, Britain's been overrun and all our services are to break in point. And oh, you can't book a doctor's appointment and have them see you that day. You're waiting two weeks or a month. Everything's all horrible and no one's wanted to adapt to our way of life and told me it's illegal to eat sausage and mashed potatoes on a Sunday for my dinner even though I've been doing it since 1947. <sighs> you know... And then of course the Leave campaign, you know... <laughs> You know, they were obviously the same and, and, you know, I guess I bought into some of that fear but it's, you know, it's... It was all, oh, no, we're going to be broken and broken. The Tories are going to run away and we'll have no rights and all this, that, the next thing. And yes, I know, I, that's, that's me and yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, this morning, Nigel Farage actually saying that um, he actually said that um, he cannot guarantee that all of this extra money that we'll be saving by not paying our dues to the European Union is going to be going on the NHS. And that was one of the big arguments on the leaflet, guys. I mean, already, it wasn't even 8am and already the guy was flip-flopping. And to be honest, I mean, Nigel Farage has actually expressed his wish for the UK to adopt an American-style healthcare system. So, you know, I don't trust anything he says about the NHS anyway. Not that I trust anything he says about anything else. Um, you know, now David Cameron is away to resign. Now, I guess, you know, a lot of people will be like, well, thank goodness for that. I really don't like David Cameron. You know, he's presided over the worst six years in British, uh, recent British history. It's, I'm really glad he's going. Well... In a way, so am I. However, we've now got to think about... Uh, we've now got to think about who is going to replace him. And to be honest, a lot of people are asking, why is David Cameron resigning? Because if you look at it logically, he was actually... He, you know, he went to the election in, uh, last year. You know, he said, right, I'm going to, you know vote for the Conservatives and you will get a chance to decide whether or not you want the UK to remain part of the European Union. And so people voted them in and sure enough they delivered that promise. You know as much as I don't like the Tories they did they actually did um, say what they were going to do and they delivered it. So people are saying well why is Ca David Cameron resigning? Well yeah, I've got to look further into that. You see, David Cameron and uh, George Osborne and a few others, they, believe it or not, were pro-EU. Now, I find that quite hard to believe. Now, Elmo3 and I were chatting, and Elmo3 reckons that David Cameron is not a complete idiot and, and has probably actually had a look at the potential financial ramifications that um, could be caused by Brexit and you know but um, I don't know I, I personally don't know why David Cameron wanted in the EU but he did and obviously you know Britain voted this morning to leave so I guess David Cameron feels that 
he's got to resign. I mean, yesterday he was saying that whatever happens, Britain will remain within the EU. I don't know. I mean, that... Admirable, but, um... You know, that would ruin it, because, I mean, that you'd be actively going against the democratic will of the British people. You know, so... I don't know, maybe maybe he felt he, he didn't really have much of a choice, you know, on the matter. Maybe he felt that he, at this point, had to resign. Well, yeah. Okay, so that, you know, that's obviously... That's obviously a thing. Um, you know, Alex Salmond resigned after the independence referendum, the Scottish independence referendum. So, you know, I guess, you know, it's inevitable. I mean, I, I kind of thought that David Cameron would resign, you know, in the event of Brexit. Um, but now we've got to think about who's going to replace him. Because he's certainly not going to call another election, I'll tell you that. Who's who's going to replace David Cameron? Let's be honest. The person who's tipped to replace him is actually going to be more likely to be um, Boris Johnson. Ah yes, Bojo the Clown. Britain's Donald Trump. I tell you, if Donald Trump becomes the US President, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, then I will honestly believe that someone, somewhere, has been handed a sports almanac from the future and has then proceeded to finagle with the space-time continuum. And as a result, we have a dystopian present. Um, but let's, um, you know, while we're on the while we're on the subject of uh, democratic mandates and you know David Cameron, you, you promised an EU referendum and that's what we got and all this, you know, isn't isn't life grand? You know, we, we vote and we get what we voted for. Don't we have a government that listens? Yeah, okay, you know, what a load of nonsense. If you actually believe that, then you know, probably. Anyway, uh, David, um, you know, mandates. Oh yeah, I forgot, I'm outside of Germany now. I'm actually in Holland, so, yeah. <laughs> Speeding is a thing that can be done. Um, <coughs> yeah. David Cameron, yeah. Well, when I say the UK voted to leave the EU... What I actually mean is, England and Wales voted to leave the EU. Scotland voted 61% in favour to actually remain part of the EU. And yet, we have found this morning that we, as well as Northern Ireland, are going to be taken against our will out of the European Union. Now that, a lot of people have said that that actually could um, grab, uh, make a good case for a second independence referendum. The only reason that Holyrood, Belfast and Cardiff have their own devolved parliaments for the, their respective countries is because of um, the EU. Alright, go to bed now, windscreen wipers. Um, you know, it was, um, it was never the intention, you know, it's never been the intention of Westminster to give up power. <laughs> of course, they don't want that. So, now that we've exited the EU, I mean, obviously, it's, it's going to take a, a lot of time to be finalised and what have you, but how long is it before the UK government come after our devolved uh, parliament? That is something that I'm genuinely worried about. It seems that um, all that uh, dire stuff, 
that uh, was going to happen under yes has actually happened under no. You know, and <laughs> I mean, we know that, um, you know, we know that um, all the things that uh, people, you know, were enticed into voting no for did not come true. You know, in fact, uh, all the bad things they said would happen under, you know, under an independent Scotland has actually happened, you know, now that we've remained part of the UK. So there you have it. You know, it's, um, I mean, I know this has been quite a rambling discussion and, you know, I've, I mean, these literally are just kind of my thoughts as, you know, as they've, they've happened, you know. So in summary, I would say... I would say that um, I'm glad, obviously, that Scotland has voted to remain part of the European Union. You know, because it, it really does, you know, it really does, like I say, you know, kind of show that we have the mandate for another independence referendum. And it also kind of shows how different the political systems and beliefs are in England versus those in Scotland. You know, we are quite a progressive society as of late. You know, we, uh, you know, we, we understand democracy. You know, we understand, you know, the need to reach out and help people who need, who need it. I mean, look at the different ways that uh, England and Scotland handled the refugee crisis um, earlier this year and, and even and last year as well. England, you know... Well, the English government were saying, "Oh no, we don't. We 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 don't want any of those refugees here. No, no, thank you. No, uh, they they won't know how to properly cook uh, toad in the hole. I don't think we want any of that. Thank you very much. Uh, why don't we just kind of go and bomb the country instead? Yeah, like that's gonna help. Um. So, where is Scotland? You know." When refugees started arriving in Scotland, that we volunteered to take in, you should have seen, like the the national, certainly the national newspaper, and you know pro ND supporters and what have you, you know, and the and the more liberal people of Scotland, everyone was behaving like an old friend was coming to visit. People were genuinely excited. You could feel it in the air. It was just magic. It's like. Look, the first refugees have touched down in Glasgow. Oh, how awesome is this? Hey, guys, welcome to Scotland. <laughs> we hope you'll be happy here. <clears throat> that just shows the difference. You know, there is a difference. There's, there's, I'm not saying that everyone, you know, I'm not saying everyone in Scotland is liberal and helpful and, um, you know, and forward thinking and, all that good stuff. Nor am I saying that everyone in England is the opposite of that. Is, uh, but you know, I'm not saying that they're everyone in England is, um, you know, is uh, fascist and you know only thinking about their self interest and what have you. Because that is untrue. But generally speaking, there's certainly a difference in culture between the two countries. It's a different and attitudes, there's a difference in traditions, there's a difference in obviously accents, there's a difference in a lot of things. And I think I speak for most of um, the indie supporters when I say that look, we really don't want, we really don't dislike England. You know, we don't want to be enemies. We're quite happy, we want you as a friendly neighbour as an ally. Of course we do. What we don't want is to be run by a, a government in a country that's not our own. You know, and you would think that people within the, within the UK would sympathise with this. You know, um, unionists. You'd think that unionists would sympathise. But no. They're like, oh, I don't want another country running our affairs. Oh, imagine that, Brussels. Oh, no. But then they're saying, oh, well, you know, you got to stay part of the, you know, it's this country. Oh, this is the UK, you know. This is, uh, this is life. You can get used to it. Get on with it. It's, 
and and I know it seems ironic that you know I want out of the UK but in the EU. You know, I think it's well actually. Like I said in my last video, what I really want is to be part of the Scandinavian Union. You know, but certainly you know being a part of the European Union, you know, it's I don't think it's a bad thing. But saying that, I do believe that we should have a lot more democracy. We should be able to elect, for example, the, the leader of the European Union. We need more democracy. We need to be able to have more of a voice in Brussels. I don't think we have um, enough of a voice in Brussels at the moment, but I don't think the exit in the EU was going to make anything better. Because it's, quite frankly, people, it's just not. Anyway, I think I've went on long enough. I've basically prattled on all the way from Warsaw to Leeds, Huddersfield. If I was going to go by real geography. But anyway, um, I think, you know, with everything, I think I've said everything I need to say about the subjects of the EU. Uh, referendum, you know, Brexit is happening. I hope a... Uh, you know, I hope Scotland becomes independent soon. But I would also like to say, you know, anyone who is currently resident in the from the European Union, anyone from the European Union that is currently resident in Scotland, as far as I'm concerned, along with uh, many of my other country folk, you're all welcome to stay. We don't want you to go. You know? Voting to exit the EU on the basis of immigration, it was just poisonous. Why did people do it? I can't believe it. Just the racist rhetoric is alive and well. And it's definitely alive and well south of the border, you know? And I've. Personally, I've just had enough of it, you know? I. You know, speak to people down south and I hear about, oh, all the, all the horrible things the immigrants are doing. You know, and, and they're, you know, referring to um, refugees as economic migrants. It's like, no, 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 please just shut up. Pick up a book or a paper that's not owned by one of the big six or something. Yeah, I don't know. Go on the Internet. Seriously, go on the Internet, you know. Next time there's a big political decision to be made and we're having a referendum to decide it, I want every one of you to actually look at different news sources from the ones you would normally look at. Yes, I have seen, you know, right-wing newspapers take on the EU referendum, you know, and, you know, I've, um, I did grow up in West Yorkshire, you know, down in England, I've heard all of the anti-EU, Eurosceptic rhetoric that I will ever need to hear from a, for a lifetime. Obviously, you know, I've been back here, you know, back in Scotland since 2008. I've heard also a lot of pro-European rhetoric. So, you know, I think, um, you know, I did have the information I needed to make the decision. You know, even though I was still, you know, even though I still didn't have the conviction I would normally like to have when walking into a polling station. But I had, um, you know, I did have enough information to know what I, I, I did want, you know, and I think, I think the internet is brilliant for that. You know, it's there. It's a good resource. Use it. Use it properly. Because you can learn a lot from it. Anyway. Hope you all enjoyed watching this video and uh, please do feel free to join me for my next video which um, actually is going to be about a computer. But um, thank you for watching this one and please, 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 please do forgive me if I've made you feel travel sick. I'm uh, just in, in case you wanted to know, I am not going to save this game. I, I'm just not. I'm probably going to, you know, replay it when to get a better controller. But thank you for watching the video and please join me for my next one. Cheerio, bye.